here or C. So okay, so it just started. So we'll I will just review. So we are just going through the challenge document, and I am um, asking everyone if they if they have any question. Oim demo explain marag barasa cho understand barok, but so that I know better. Yet part to clear now. Yet part to clear other than yeah, yeah, that's so is, is it does it mean you you want to explain it or are you gonna type and abdifata you just joined we're just discussing and if you have read the challenge document i'm asking what your understanding is uh, about the challenge what is asked and what are the, the tasks to perform and what is not clear so that it's easier first for you to reflect so before i i go into the details junior thanks to analyze the historical insurance data to optimize marketing and find low risk targets yeah and of a b testing insurance terms and develop regression and predictive models the goal is to improve skills in data predictive analytics I mean, so that's good for example and it helps lenny junior the way that you write it, the goal is to improve skills in data. It is not. There will never be in Ten Academy's training a goal to improve your skill. I mean, that is a consequence. It is to solve a business objective. So that means it is true when you try it, you know, when you are, because we are experience led, we are not knowledge or skill driven. So the Ten Academy trainings normally are experience late that means you do something and through that something happens that could be a skill acquisition or knowledge acquisition or you know but it is a lot more the goal the very fundamental goal and the goal is to answer to be able to learn answer business objectives because that's what you get paid for you don't get paid for adding skill right so you get paid for you know, solving some business objectives. So um, it's it might be minor, but it's the most important thing I can say um, in terms of the format of the challenge. But that's good. Yeah. Um, but yes, so through that, definitely there are going to be skill improvements in predictive analytics, machine learning, statistical modeling, and all that. Okay. And Matthias, uh, and improving their marketing strategy, attracting new clients, and optimizing insurance. I like that way of summarizing because it really puts the very clearly what needs to be solved, right? So that is the, the project is all exactly in improving and understanding those business key business objectives is essential. Now, at wherever work you are, that's that the type of understanding that would make you get paid a lot. Because if you just hear something and you just go and do something, because yeah, the skill is nice or the tool that you're using is great, you know, people will not pay for that or you will always not progress. But if you really exactly in the way that, for example, yes, you, you listen very carefully what needs to be solved. Okay, there's marketing strategy to be improved. Uh, attracting new clients is, you know, the, the interest and optimizing also insurance products so that again that that means um it is by learning it's called anal you know you are doing analytics to to be able to optimize so and these are still optimize means one of them right it's either marketing strategy or cost reduction for the company or revenue generation for the company so you either generate revenue to the company or this cost um and by doing, by basically that means competitiveness of the, the, the company increases, right? So the company now, when it's optimized, it, it is able to uh, compete better in the market. So brand building, for example, becomes that. Or the product becomes efficient. And when it's efficient, even for the same amount of price, but it will, it will be much liked, right? So the sentiment on the company will increase. But again, that then leads in terms of either attracting, you know, cost reduction, um, because now you have a lot of people, clients, 
you can reduce because of that you can reduce your cost that means you can add more people again or you can um generate revenue that means again just you you get a new way of a new product to sell to increase your revenue so almost all in because we are working on business related and anywhere like for that matter it is about those elements and articulating in the zone uh, from every challenge means you are closer to answering okay now once we have a very clear understanding of the business objectives there's going to be a translation from business objective to data science objectives or from business objectives to engineering objectives or from business objectives to some other objectives and and that's what's going to be the tasks are for you know the tasks that are given are going to be like okay how are then this business objective gets translated into the um the actual in this case analytics marketing analytics um marketing analytics engineering objectives right okay that's good anyone want to add yeah dasa or abdifata or anyone else want to add more based on this understanding If you have also a question, you can ask. Okay. So, as I said, it's because of the questions and, uh, you know, you can imagine. Um, yeah, you can type. I understand the Adessa, so if you want, you can type. Um, because of those questions, you are getting more information. And actually, the most relevant information you can get is when people are asking. So sometimes be able to also help others. Even if you understand something, but you, you know it's a subtle point or you want to confirm, it's good to ask, right? Because when you ask, others will benefit. And normally that. If you are a type of person who benefits a lot other people people like you and that means usually in a job um you know you you know you perform better so just see it as also a kindness asking question or explaining or trying even if you you have a you haven't understood well it is also a kindness that you could do okay so then as i said earlier so the um the business objective um, so the company that is interested in this work is alpha care insurance solutions and um the scenario is that you are recently hired as a you know analytics marketing analytics engineer to help uh, primarily of course different things but the marketing department but in your first project in this case you are given some data that they they know it's very similar to many other data and they want you to do well and therefore they want to see like and they're very interested in the results so it's not just uh, because you passed already the interview process whatever you are now being paid you know you've started earning your salary which means since the day one you must be valuable to the company so it's not just a, a toy project it's actually a project that they want to use into their um, it may not be a priority at the moment but they really want to use you know the opportunities you discover as well as also insights any insights you get right and therefore your boss uh, in this case your team lead um is asking you or because you are mid-junior at this current position they have identified the objectives um very clearly and it is you know the target is that your analysis should be targeted into helping optimizing the marketing strategy um, as well as discover low risk targets for which for example premiums can be reduced so that basically means uh, attracting new clients so basically the marketing means normally to find you know which area can you market more for example highlight or for example the risks if you are if if the marketing is going in the wrong for example if you discover an area a geographical area where the risks are 
really really small then you could really say like okay that we can lower the premium as well as um if they are also there are many people around that area that are interested for example because they subscribed and they are happier uh then you can say basically the those areas would would go into the marketing so you're going to create more or less a dashboard for the marketing highlighting risks um i don't you know geographically kind of showing uh, in a geolocation sense the risk map as well as also uh, testing some hypothesis so normally marketing works by hypothesis testing right because they say you know okay uh, they normally assume things like okay there are no risk differences across provinces because if they know there are then that becomes that goes into either the marketing of the company to say like you know uh, either a thought leadership uh, or it can go into like the highlighting what are good in those areas why are the risk lower and so they basically can understand and can work with different companies governments to highlight that so and this allows the thought leadership of the company and it can it can help them as well optimize their product uh, on on the selling for example in certain provinces they can offer group insurances for example right well, other hypothesis like that that can help them is that okay so it's not only just provinces but you can go into the zip codes so by risk normally it means for you like as an insurance company a risk is the claims right so somebody has a now a policy they bought a policy from you an insurance policy and for you risk means if many people are asking more claims in that you know then it's a risk for you it's a high, very high risk um including also of course discontinuing payments and others for example if there are natural causes or you know the area is if it's really really different in, in this case it's one country so the the rules the legal regulations are more or less the same but there you know in other scenarios risks could be a lot more dependent on even change in regulations and things like that but in this case it's very simpler and other types of testings that you could do is you know that there are no significant margin differences between zip codes now by margin this is, is actually a more complex phenomena right so it's not just a risk in terms of claim but also you are actually the premium a person paid the fraction of the premium with respect to claim the total uh, premium collected divided by the total um the total claim that has been and those usually are quantified the ratio is quantified as a margin so for example 100 margin or 100 percent margin is one you know a factor of two things like that so so you are actually calculating now the same as before but now with the hypothesis the null hypothesis being okay there are no significant margin pro differences between zip codes and another one interesting one is of course there are no significant risk differences between men and women you know these are type of things that you can test and really highlight with just this analysis you can really help a lot more you can generate lots of you know uh, ideas for the marketing department to use as well as also this might lead to understanding better the risk profiles of by geography as well as by uh, other attributes um, and that so once you do that so this is one element another element is of course a very simple thing you could do is that okay now knowing maybe in your hypothesis you might reject the null hypothesis which says there are no risk differences between zip course because there, there are because as you can see poorer areas if you park your your uh, car you might get stolen in some areas the, the your car being stolen or the element of your car being stolen is higher than in others so that's basically you know statistically you have to prove it but we know by by definition that's the case so but imagine let's now you want to generate or you want to produce a linear regression model that predicts the total claims per zip code that gives you then you know that goes into the planning of a new policy for example and as well as also you can develop a machine learning model that predicts optimal premium values that means that that is basically 
you usually say at a margin level, let's say 70% or 80% margin, because of course every company wants the margin to be infinite, but if you make it infinite, no one is going to interest it. If the, no one is interested, even if your margin, your model is infinite margin, but no one, it, it is from zero value, you know, that means nothing. So you, you want to optimize. So almost always insurance is optimization. You want to increase the premium, while at the same time you want to attract more people to join. So that means you have to, and more people will join if you reduce the premium. For those people who are not familiar with, you know, um, insurance terminologies, premium, whatever, it gets clearer. Go into this common, you know, insurance glossary, and it gets easier as well as also read about some insurance things, and it gets clearer. But so one, another model that you're going to do is predicting the basically or, or, or having a machine learning model and are given a set of features about the car to be insured, set of features about the owner, set of features about the location of the owner, and other features you find relevant in the data, you are going to predict the optimal premium values. And then, of course, you are going to report on the explaining power of the important features that influence your model. So as you can see, this is really a real-life project, right? OK, and if you have questions, you can still ask. Um, uh yes so yeah that's uh, uh yes the data is here so as you can see it's like if you click on the challenge document here you get the data in the folder that you will you will be able to download the data it's about uh zipped is about 20 megabytes but when you compress it it might get between 100 to 300 i, I don't know which one um but yeah and this is a historical data is from february to august 2015 um and the structure uh, there are many columns but the columns are some are about just the actual the, the policy so basically underwritten means the type of constraint that you have what is what are you covered at you know everything the detail so there are in the terminologies you will understand there are fully underwritten versus limited underwritten or no underwritten so underwritten you can understand if someone is really actually underwriting something like i'm just gonna be underwriting just so that I can explain it better. Uh, format text uh, underwrite. I, unfortunately, uh, underline. Okay. So it's somehow like underwritten is like underline, where it's basically you are the more underwriting, the more that means you are stressing what needs, what are covered, what are not covered. So it's basically the contract. You can say. A contract can be a very detailed contract, or a contract can be um, a small, basically vague contract saying like, okay, you are insured against, let's say, vehicle damage. And, uh, and it's a group cover. It's not about particularly your car, but let's say of all cars in that area. So those usually are, it's called limited underwritten. And fully underwritten means it's really usually specific to the particular car and you know it's very specific so that means you will be asked a lot of detail about for a fully underwritten cover okay so again this is get it it's gonna get you're gonna get the hang of it these terminologies so but this one is about basically if it's a contract it's the contract id uh, because every person normally has a contract therefore they have a contract id and the policy is basically, of course, for that particular, whatever different contracts you are going to write, you know, different people are writing different contracts, but the policy that dictates this insurance um, part is a policy. So that basically means they are insuring a car with, I don't know, with bronze, silver, platinum, whatever types, and those are different types of policies, and they cover from this range to that range. That's basically what the company, the CEOs or the kind of like the insurance department will be highlighting and the details would be of course the underwritten client or whatever others are going to be uh, you know writing what details must be there but the overall company's product is called usually the policy and this is a policy id and then the transaction data is of course this is a, a data of a transaction data that means you are paying either a premium or you are asking a claim so all of that your transaction this is just the transaction part of the data 
you are not going to be given, for example, what is underwritten for each one or the policy. It's just only the part about the just that. And therefore, every month or by the term, normally the term the, the, is the term that your contract uh, have to pay every month or it could be every year. But that part is described whenever you are paying, where, whenever there's a transaction, this table records it. So it's only year, months, and the date is all, always um, approximated to be the first day of the month. Okay, so that, that means there is no information on the, on the date, but you have information about the year and the, the month. And these are columns about the client. So as you can see, is the client or the vehicle uh, this could be actually, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure, but it's about, is it VAT registered? What is the citizenship of the client? The legal type, is it like a person, you know, a very sole proprietary, it's a company or, you know, what type of, uh, because when, you know, even a company is a legal, you know, it has that citizenship and all that, all the details, the title, even if it's a company, sometimes it's written as Mr. Language, the language that it prefers to speak, bank, account type marital status as you can see you know wealthy versus non-wealthy sometimes can be distinguished by the bank and account type you know um so this is something interesting because for example a credit a credit card implies something right and also a bank which is much more you know you know if it's zaman bank versus uh, some other bank you also know about so this can quantify it's not a direct but it can, can can give you can be a proxy for wealth, and as well as also gender and marital status. So again, you might say if a person is married, is, are they high risk versus low risk? The same as gender male or versus female. You can do some analysis. So these are things to analyze. And then the the location, because it's also rather important in insurance, is of course where the basically the person is located um, at different at the country, province, postal code. These are really you know this is big this is smaller and this is smaller and as it gets smaller and smaller okay and then about the car so because you are insuring the car as you can see this is kind of if it might be a limited but it's also it, it might be al almost a, a full underwritten cover so that means it really specifies so many details about the car to maybe these are what they have in their model to quantify the premium or how much insurance per month the person, you know, will have to pay. And so this is basically the MM code, even even this is in South Africa. So you can get even about so much more details about MM code because MM codes are a combination of multiple codes, including the car type, including uh, where they are bought, including many other details. So by also, if you wanna uh, enrich the data, you can also go uh, and we reach the area by using the MM port and the vehicle type and the make, the model, the cylinders, and all that are there. And then the columns about the, the plan, of course, the sum insured, the term frequency of the payment, calculated premium per term. That means what per this term, how much they pay, excess selected, for example, even if there are the, the standard insurance, but the person, did they select excess? And the cover category, sometimes this cover category could be just a windshield, or it could be just a spokio, or it could be in the design, design. cover type, cover group, section, product, nazi nazi, explore marag in part of EDA will either. Then, of course, the other, the very key parameters. So these are, you know, the amount, the total premium that the person is asked to pay for that insurance, for that policy, as well as also if they have been claiming so far at that means when they do transaction, the total claim so far is also given. So these are the key parameters. Okay, I'm going to stop there because this really tells the specific statement about low risk target and premium reduction. Thanks, Nadia. So low risk target means, you know, um, sometimes as the insurance, <laughs> apologies. Yeah, so as the insurance starts normally, for example, Kafiya, when they started insurance, um, they don't know much about who is high risk. You know, of course, they would imagine, okay, people that are, uh, let's imagine they are insuring, so they have started insurance on 
um, medical insurance, especially laboratory insurance, right? So to go and you will be covered for the laboratory uh, work that you do, medical laboratory. Now, they wanted to cover those people who are actually medium and small companies or, you know, basically daily laborers like uh, uh, shoe shiners or people working especially in construction they are mostly uh, so and then there are different areas so in this case but they don't know who's actually at high risk of course your gut feeling will tell you that it might be the the people in construction at are high risk because they there's a high risk that they might fail you know they might fall but what you are ensuring is for a laboratory work and and there might be another product of course insurance product that could be for let's imagine um just to go and see a doctor you know and now you because you, at first you don't know so you probably put the same premium everywhere just because you don't know much you don't have data but as you discover that for example shoe shiners don't normally go to because they are younger and they're healthier normally and they don't go that much to go to see the doctor or they don't because they also if they go to the doctor they the doctor doesn't recommend much of uh, you know laboratory work you might now these are called low risk categories right so that means because they are a low risk target you can reduce the premium for them so that means the amount for the same cover if you are shoe shiner you probably um you probably are going to pay less but if you are working on construction company, you might be asked to pay a higher premium. Nadia, is that is that uh, is that does that answer your question? Great. Okay. Considering this and future challenge, do you have any advice, tips, how to get good relevant insights and to meet the business objective? Yes. Or the business of is kind of hard for me um yeah i mean but that's what the whole point of this entire repeated training every every week you are going to be given and you're going to be forced to think about business objectives because that's what matters and no i i mean as an employer for example i don't care if a person has a technical background i care if they can use that technical background to solve my business you know my business problems so and that's exactly why we focus all the time, all the week, focus your, to sharpen your use of your technical background towards the business objective. So you are in the good place, right? So we are exactly doing that. So the training is all about that. If you don't have already the technical background to develop it, but it's not the objective is not that one, but to apply it to, um, to getting a business objective. So uh, Abraham, it is fine. It is exactly what we are doing. Every, you know, when you repeat it, it gets clearer. If it is not clearer this week, it will get clearer next week. It gets better and better and better because you will have the same thing again and again be asked. Yeah. Hope that is clear. Okay. So, um, the learning outcomes a lot, as you can see, the learning outcomes, the very first thing is actually already to answer to do exactly what Abraham asked. To, to you will get you will start thinking about the business objective and using your technical background or you know newly found back technical and non-technical skills as well as uh, your existing technical and non-technical skills to answering you know the business objective so that's the very first outcome ever all the time in all the challenges and others that are listed here and again you know the competencies you can write are basically in this manner and the tutors and the team you know now the deliverables of course the deliverables and the tasks to be done are as i said they're translations you can abraham for example you can learn from from how we break it down you see like now you are if you were a senior person you you will not be given these tasks you will be just told the business objective and you have to break that means you have to translate the business objective with the actual analysis objective. So these two are different two objectives, right? Business objective is doesn't care how you do it. It just specifies the objectives and whatever the, uh, that it needs to get with all the caveats and stuff. And then the analytics objective is 
then takes that one and translates it into to achieve there. It's like a root finding, you know, if it's like if you are working on right way, you know, know two things where you are and where you want to deliver or where you want to, you know, the person where you want to go. The root finding and maximizing the roots, avoiding traffics and all that, that is another objective, right? So that one is, let's call it analytics objective in this case. So this is, so now by, by looking at how we break it for you, you can also see, uh, you can learn also how we do it and so that you can learn how you, yourself you can do it, okay? So that's why in this case, for example, almost always, you, it's sometimes you might think it's not relevant, but it's very relevant how you start developing your, you know, you know, do you create a new Git repository and you kind of actually think about the very best practices in that, including, of course, the structure of your Git, you know, how do you put the pods, you know, where do you put them in which, you know, how do you, what is a folder thinking, as well as also, you know, GitHub actions for sometimes unit testing as well as deployment and others, you start thinking about it, at least especially for some kind of unit tests, like if a code is, you know, um, for example, if you want to integrate two codes, if you want to check that one code almost always stays constant some, or in some branch, if it is pushed to the same branch, it does some kind of analysis, um, for example, to check for the styling, you know, of the code that does it use the same style as recommended or are there imported codes, imported packages that are not relevant? Things like that, you can put it, for example, as part of your GitHub actions to check uh, when they are merged. So these are all just that development part of the area. And the other one is, of course, the data understanding and the data uh, analysis. So that part is really key because if you don't understand the data, you can't go anything, can't really even plan. So this is data understanding, data exploratory, data analysis and statistical thinking. Um, and of course, in that area, there are, these are things to start. Of course, the very first is to summarize the data, you know, for example, do some descriptive statistics on variability for numerical features or data structure, for example, do all of my data, for example, is the date in the date time format and things like that. If so, how is the date, you know, can I do some time series, things like that. The data type already tells you something and then data quality assessment for missing values and how are they many, how should you feel and all that. And um, another one, for example, is like, it might be categorical variables and you might really, are they just human by handwritten or are they actually constant? Things like that, that will also be data quality. And then you can do some univariate analysis, which is basically to learn column by column the distributions. Normally these are just quick to say, you know, how is my data distributed? Sometimes one, one column is just only has one value. In that case, it has no information. You can drop it. Um, sometimes it has multiple values, things like that, right? Sometimes it has a Gaussian distribution. Sometimes it has a different distribution. So this is, this will help you understand. And then the bivariate and multivariate analysis usually means you're going to look now, okay, because usually your interest group are claims as well as premiums. Um, and so you can look the variation of that with respect to, for example, the zip code, with respect to male and female, with respect to the country, with respect to, you know, uh, marital status and all, all of that. So that's kind of when you look two variables or more than two variables, that's what's bivariate and multivariate analysis. And then you can do some kind of over time as well as over geography trends or their geography, sorry, just uh, on the last one on mute. It's past. Okay, so that, and outliers and visualizations will be. And one part, because you're gonna split the data here and there, and you're going to be really tracking which data was used for what. So one one very useful tool uh, you we want you to develop and learn is DVC, uh, data version control. So you know uh, code version control. So that's, for example, GitHub. Uh, in this case, also when you are really 
want to sometimes have lots of data splits and data you have to take care for example as you split these are called uh, you know this is very important dvc has not only data version control a lot more but learning about that is very useful therefore task two is entirely dedicated on that and then on task three it's basically of course you start doing null hypothesis testing again you are going to be assuming the following null hypothesis the four null hypothesis and you test for each of them uh, and while you you know to test for one of them for example you do this the task you select the metric for example in this case there are no risk differences across provinces. Your key key metric is, of course, province. So because that's what is varying, and you want to test if there are uh, changes with respect to provinces. Given that it's not very specific, it's also very easy. That means as long as you just prove once there is a difference, a statistically difference between one province and another province, that there is a risk difference, then you reject. If you if statistically significant you find difference, then you reject the null hypothesis. Or if you can't find a statistical one, you accept the null hypothesis. Okay. So it's you will learn you do the same this task again for four times for each of them, basically. But because you're gonna write a modular code, you know, doing it becomes easier. And therefore, you select the metrics, you know, for example, the first for the first one, the metrics is the province, the second one is the zip codes. And the third one is actually you are going to create some feature, a new feature using feature engineering, and that's called margin, uh, which is basically the, the ratio, the cumulative ratio between uh, uh, profit uh, premium, total premium collected, divided by, um, by the um, uh, claim for each zip code. So you will have that data and you will do that. And when you data segment, especially you know in provinces and zip codes, and again here and there, what happens is that you must really know that that the data in both A and B are are actually varying. You know they don't vary. For example, the number of the male and female ratio must be constant between the control group and the test group. Basically, the test group means the one that you you almost always when there are two, for example, provinces you are using. You can you can label one A, you can label the other one B. It doesn't matter because what you are testing is that the, the two are there is significant difference or not, right? So in that case, there's no need which one is A, which one is B. You can label one A and B. And A normally is the name is called control group and B is test group. Now, in this control and test group, you have to make sure that, for example, the statistical element is the same uh, in the group. For example, as I said, the vehicle types, the vehicle mix are not that different. Or another one, for example, the martial status fraction must not be that different. So all of this they, you must taste so that you know, you make sure that it's not because of those differences that there are statistical difference. Because in a hypothesis testing, what you need is that you must really say the difference when you say either there is statistical difference or not, significant difference or not, you meant with respect to the KPI, not because of another variable. So you have to control that other variables. So that's why you have to uniformize. That's why I it's written here what you really have to be careful, you know, because you must make sure that group A and group B are statistically similar on everything except the KPI variable, the one that which is called usually the, the one intervention is made or the one that you are considering. Okay, and once you do that, of course, there is a statistical testing that you have to perform. Once you have the, this is a data preparation part, and then after that, you have to do either t test, chi square test, or z test. Normally, actually, this is z test. Again, you will learn. Um, so basically, you z and t. You know, again, I know that some of you probably haven't taken statistics seriously in the past so this is good time it's a very simple thing you can get codes here and there it has been it's one of the most that are out there you know and so it's fine as long as you are actually understanding even if you use gpt to generate i don't care but the most important part is understand it okay so on the code is everywhere so you can get lots of codes from many blocks so 
uh, just the, the point is what you are doing you have to know okay so and you will then analyze and then you will estimate p-value and then you say like okay whether it's statistically significant or statistically not significant um you do and there are when you in in hypothesis testing there's actually a power so that means what is the power of the testing normally you will learn on that one and there will be tutorials in that it power basically means is the data sufficient you know by how much for example if you have only two two data points the the date the power of the data is very small to do anything because it's like you can't really you can't really do much with two data points and as you increase the data points if the also the data variability is very small that means you collect the same type of data again the power of the data is small but if there are much more variations then you will be able the statistical power will be higher so you have to learn about power as well not only just uh, uncertainties and confidence limits and then you will analyze and report and task four is modeling again in this case you're going to try a few linear regression decision trees random forest gradient boosting at least i would say just try if nothing the this one or you know or random forest and linear regression as key and it's basically what you are trying to do now is that now you have the eda you're going to do you're going to select features and you can use all features if you want but of course the, as more features the most of these models perform you know weaker so by selecting key variables and you're trying to predict um, a very small element which is saying whether for example the optimal finding the premium so which means basically you have to write a loss function but at least in in some areas you can predict also the total loss in that as as part of that in you know for that category and so in that sense you will be able to learn for example where the model predicts there's going to be in, in uh, a higher claim uh, for which type of variables so by then then you will be able to consult you know of course in this region with male are much more high risk or in that region because high risk as i said is total claim or the amount of claim so that's the, the risk is the proxy for risk is clay right so that one okay and then you do model building evaluation and and all that okay and the minimum essentials to do are just described here and there will be tutorials so i think these are all just the delivery as usual wednesday and saturday and there will be a lot of tutorials and i will add statistical power here um So maybe again, um, we will ask them, okay? So, and we have given you so that just on insurance analytics, maybe you can reach some, this can help you a lot uh, to, to get an understanding. And then you would also, I think there would, there will be about hypothesis testing, data version control, statistical modeling, and of course, CICD, you have some references suggested, okay? okay so that is it from my side any questions it it looks almost always on mondays it looks very daunting but i can guarantee you on saturdays it feels very good to be able to have gone through all these ups and downs and get used to the very real way of doing something and then experience being valuable um, using technical and non-technical skills so and this this kind of loop will continue for a while and then you get the hang of it so persist and insist and things will be fine okay great i hope then you know i would have expected normally more questions but already for those who asked the question thank you because not only you helped yourself but also you helped your friends and um, so thank you so much and uh, then happy challenge thanks everyone
by Antenna Academy team, we can stop the recording.